Good evening and welcome to the Church of St. Peter as we celebrate the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, number 783, Immaculate Mary. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, brothers and sisters, it's a joy to be with you tonight for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And also tonight, uh, or today, we are commemorating the 15th anniversary of Father Stephen's ordination to the priesthood. And uh, so uh, that's a great moment in, in his life and all the wonderful things he's done for the Lord throughout his ministry. As we've now prepared to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his help.
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, the woman who you, whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Sing. 
unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us and him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will. For the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we were chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist. For the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The angel.
angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have had no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. The words of praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The doctrine of the Immaculate Conception is certainly one of the most difficult teachings of the Church for non-Catholic people to understand. Um, I work a lot with the Coming Home Network, and this comes up all the time as people are considering a journey to the Catholic Church, but one of the things they really struggle with is the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception. It is a great mystery, and um, I always like to encourage people not to read the theologians on this subject, because it'll drive you crazy. Um, it's uh, looking at those schoolmen from the Middle Ages when they debate this subject. Uh, it reminds me of the squirrels in the backyard fighting over, <laughs> over a nut. Um, and it was, it was on this day in the year 1854 that Pope Pius IX declared this uh, solemn teaching of the Church. And I love the way that he began that encyclical with the Latin words, ineffabilis Deus, the ineffable God. In other words, the whole thing is a great mystery, and we can only stand in awe of this mystery. We can't explain it in any full way, but it is a beautiful mystery. The actual sense of the Immaculate Conception is actually quite simple. From the Catechism of the Catholic Church, remember these words? What the Catholic faith believes about Mary is based on what it believes about Christ. So what we believe about Mary is, is intricately related to what we believe and profess about the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus Christ is true God and true man. And in his humanity, he is perfect, he is sinless, and as St. Paul reminds us in a couple of places in his letters, Jesus Christ is the new Adam, 
He's the second Adam. The Son of God came to reset the clock. Adam, in the fall of Adam, had introduced sin into the human race. And every human being from that point on is affected with this contagion of original sin. It's, by, it's there by nature because of Adam's fall. So when Christ Jesus came to be the second Adam and to reconstitute humanity for God the Creator, it was necessary for him to assume a sinless human nature without stain of original sin. I like the way in the reading today, in the Office of Readings, the way that St. Anselm put it. Without God's Son, nothing could exist. Without Mary's Son, nothing could be redeemed. So how do we get the sinless nature of Jesus Christ? Did he just sort of come and hop onto a ordinary sinful person? And through his faith, he kind of redeemed him and made him whole? That's not how it works. No, since every person born after Adam is born with the stain of original sin, God had to do something special here. He had to recreate in one particular instance sinless humanity by which his only begotten son could take that sinlessness, that sinless human nature and live it faithfully in the world. So the only person that can do that is one that God, by a very special grace, makes possible. And that one person is Mary. By the extraordinary work of God's grace, at the very moment of Mary's conception, when God created her soul and then infused it into Anna and Joachim's unborn child, at that very moment, Mary becomes the new Eve. She approaches as near to God as it is possible for a human being. Thus, she is able to provide the sinless human nature necessary for the incarnation. And as the Church has taught consistently over the years, whatever honor and praise we bestow on the Mother of God, are there because of her son. I'm going to close this little homily with these words from Pope Pius IX. He's an amazing fellow, Pius IX was. Um, if you ever want to go and visit him in Rome, he, he lays underneath the main altar at um, the Basilica of St. Lawrence, the first deacon. Um, and it's just a wonderful thing to go and visit. But he was something of a poet. And I love the way he describes Mary here. The very model of purity and innocence, more beautiful than beauty, more lovely than loveliness, more holy than holiness. God alone accepted, Mary is more excellent than them all. To praise her, all the tongues of heaven and earth do not suffice. And Pope Pius encouraged us to bring our prayers to Mary and ask for her intercession, because she is higher than all the angels and archangels. She's the greatest piece of creation that God had ever made. And because all of heaven sings her praise, when she brings 
our petitions forward and lays them before her blessed son. Pius said, how could he not respond in the affirmative? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us rejoice with the Immaculate Mother of God, for it is through her intercession that God has bestowed every spiritual blessing upon us. With heartfelt confidence in his love, we now pray. For the Holy Church, that she may grow towards the perfection of Mary, our destiny and our hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, that through prayer and penance it may enter an age of peace, the triumph of Mary's heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the pure in heart, that they may spread decency and harmony throughout society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that she who is full of grace may help us on our pilgrimage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dear pastor, Father Stephen Hoffman, on this, the anniversary, 15th anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood, that God would continue to bless him and reward him in his priestly work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, that they may rejoice forever with the Blessed Mother, we pray especially tonight for the repose of the soul of Ruth Marie Barda. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you reveal your eternal goodness through the immaculate conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. May we who celebrate her singular grace of innocence come to share in her radiant love and purity through Christ our Lord, amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her, on account of your prevenient grace, to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin so that we, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Joseph, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserve blessed Mary in her immaculate conception through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads for the final blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 783. We'll sing verses 3 and 4.